Hey everybody, welcome to five behaviors that can ruin your relationship. Stay tuned to the end, I'll give you even a little bonus on how you can have strong and healthy relationships and avoid the things that will send them down the tubes. But first, here's a showreel. The biggest things I see, especially when people get into newer relationships, is they want to spend a lot of time together. And that's all fun and great. However, being together too much or too little can both ruin your relationship. Right now, a lot of people will text and they text on and on and on. Do you know that most of the time, if you spend most of your relationship just texting, the relationship will end within a month? One month. Why? because we're not building a deeper connection. So you need to spend time together to, to build a deeper connection. However, if you spend every waking moment together, you start losing your individuality. You start losing your other friends, your goals, your dreams, and all of a sudden you can become so enmeshed that you can start feeling resentful or the other person can start feeling resentful for all the time it's taking to be together. And that also can ruin a relationship. So really find what feels good for you, a healthy balance of spending time together and also keeping your own individuality. So number two, avoiding open and honest communication. So this could be not telling your partner the truth, not asking for the truth of what you want, what you need, what you desire in a relationship, but it also looks like telling little white lies to avoid conflict. Telling little white lies because you feel like it's what the other person wants to hear. Any kind of lie in a relationship, no matter how well-intentioned, can build up and lead to distrust over the time. Trust is one of the hardest things to get back in a relationship once you break it. So instead of telling those little white lies, look for a really gentle and honest way to say what you need to say. Express your wants, your needs, your desires right off the bat. Otherwise you might be stuck in a long relationship, not being able to communicate the way that you want. And often when we first get into a new relationship, we get a little bit af afraid to speak our mind. But this is the best time because you are teaching each other who you are, how you want to be treated and how you want to connect. You don't want to pretend you're somebody that you're not and waste all of this time if it turns out that you're not a good fit for each other. So by starting a relationship with good, strong, open, clear communication, you are really going to thrive. Number three is when you nag or criticize your partner. And this can come in so many forms. So think about it this way, because sometimes we don't see it in our own relationships. The way we do one thing is the way we do everything. So think about the weather. And if you live in California, this is a really bad example. But if you live anywhere where the weather changes a lot, you may know what I mean. So imagine I get up today. I think, oh, it's too hot. It's too cold. It's not, this is the wrong day for it to rain. And I'm always complaining to my friends or my family, like, oh, if it was only not so hot today. Oh, if only the wind wasn't so strong today. If you catch yourself doing something like that, where you're always complaining or wishing that something was different, wishing the weather was different, wishing the circumstance was different, that your job was different, that all these things, and if you're always talking, whining, complaining, wishing something were different, you're probably doing the same thing in your relationship. So look at, are you actually allowing that person to be who they are? Or are you subtly criticizing them the way they do things, how they cook, how they clean, how they interact, the time they spend with you, the time they don't spend with you? Because when we start nagging, whining, criticizing in a relationship, gets pretty old, pretty fast. And good, strong, independent people will not put up with that for very long. So that's one really good way to destroy a relationship fast is by criticizing, whining, or nagging. Number four, stopping affection. Now it's natural over the process of a relationship to maybe have a little less desire, to fall into a little bit of a routine because actually naturally your hormones shift and the desire becomes a little bit harder to come by. But if you completely stop affection, 
If you're not showing that other person that you care, if you're not using different types of int intimacy, whether it be emotional, uh, physical, spiritual, intellectual, if you're not getting intimacy and affection or giving it, that can often also end a relationship. Because people start feeling unloved, unwanted, disconnected. And when we feel disconnected, what are we doing in the relationship? Half the time we're in a relationship to feel more connected, to feel more loved, to feel more together, right? We want to be together in a relationship. And when we're not feeling that, when we're feeling alone, separate and away from our partner, then we make different choices. And often we start looking for that affection outside of our relationship, whether that be through a breakup, whether that be through infidelity, whether that be using um, friends or family members for that emotional support, but anyway, it damages the relationship. Number five, do you stop doing things together? Stop exploring new things, new ideas, and fall into a rut, into a routine? Maybe you start watching the same shows every single night and eating the same dinners or going to the same places or having sex the same way or having the same conversation over and over and over again. This can be really draining on a relationship, right? Because us as humans, we want something new. We want something more exciting. So just like if we're whining about the weather all the time, the same thing as we're doing everything the same every single day, our brain gets a little bored, a little hypnotized. We fall into this rut and nothing really feels exciting anymore. We can start feel, having pre, uh, feelings of depression. We can start having feelings of lack, of just not feeling satisfied in our lives. And this can also happen where we start looking for that excitement, that newness somewhere else. Sometimes it looks like in our career, we start working more. Sometimes it looks like with our kids. Sometimes it looks like in a different relationship. So really try to keep exciting, engaging new ideas, new things, new experiences alive in your relationship. Now I know not everybody's an extrovert wants to go out running around, spending a lot of energy all the time, but even finding new movies, new discussions, how can you do something that's a little bit different that really helps you bond, really helps you feel connected, right? And maybe that just means you go to the beach in a dress and go run around and spin and just feel some freedom, feel some aliveness, get some excitement back even for yourself so you can bring that back into your relationship with your partner. As a bonus, when you are taking care of yourself, you're living your best, strong, most authentic life. When you're being a strong individual, that also comes back and reflects on the relationship because when each of you come together with strength and passion and power and excitement for life and for your careers and what you're doing and what you want and what you desire, that reflects into the relationship because now you're growing, your partner's growing, you grow together, right? And so that energy and that momentum really can help strengthen a relationship. So I hope you found some valuable keys. Please subscribe. Tell me what's one thing that you do to really keep excitement alive in your relationship, either a past relationship or your current relationship. I'm Dawn and we'll see you later.